Hello. Hi. How's it going? Um, so we're going to do a little bit of a strange video that we've never done before. Mm -hmm. um, but we are on our last day in Hanoi. And we feel like we've picked up some really good tips. Yes, so that, the, that we didn't see anywhere else. Uh, we did a lot of research before coming here. And these are kind of our top 10 tips that we wish we had known when we first came here. Because um, as you guys know, we found the culture to be extremely different and the country just absolutely crazy from what we're used to. Mm. So we thought we would give you what we wanted. So number one, hotels. No, the first thing I do when we're planning to go to any city is I start looking up hostels, hotels, um, B and B's, see what the options are, see what the quality is. In general, I'd say the quality here is really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, if you can, try not to go for a chain type of hotel or yes. hostel or homestay because they tend to be a little bit worse quality. But also, if you're coming from a cooler country like the UK, like we are, then definitely, definitely tr make sure that all the rooms or the room you've booked in your hotel has air conditioning. Mm. It's like high 20s at night which for us is very uncomfortable we cannot sleep in high 20s so we yeah. need the aircon and the the aircon's even more important because the humidity is about 94 percent at night mm -hmm. so the aircon just helps take out that humidity like we would probably be okay in the 20s if it wasn't for the humidity but it is massively high um and it's really interesting over here in the uk a lot of the non-chain places can be really expensive where they tend to be quite grubby over here it seems to be the opposite way around mm -hmm. so definitely avoid those um and the independent really take huge pride yeah, very in their, proud nation yeah they're like Vietnam. this is my business mm -hmm. come into my place i'm gonna make you feel amazing we're in the chains there, there isn't quite that same feeling um we have made huge use out of hostel world hostel mm -hmm. world has been a huge saver definitely look around though so we we're staying in a place um so we've been trying to stay in eights and above and you can do that very easily over here. Um, very cheap as well. The first place that we were in was like £26 a night because we didn't look around hugely. Well, and also because we it was our first travel and we weren't sure what the yeah. standard would be, so we didn't want to risk cockroaches. Yeah, um, <laughs> and in the UK, if you went below an 8, you might find it is like that. But here, we're currently in a 7.9, and it is quite nice. Like, it, it it's less good, help. but yeah. it's half the price. Yeah. So. Um, but we have been planning the rest of our trip, and we've been finding nine point nine for fifteen pounds a night. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and that's for a private double room, by the way. If you're staying in a hostel dorm, you can find nines for as cheap as two pound a night. Yeah. And they are fantastically nice hostels so definitely do your little bit of research just poke around it and you can get to the map up and you can click on it and you can stick filters of what you want and what you're looking for and that'll not steer you wrong tip number two visas so we did research before we came and we found out that from the UK and from Ireland with our passports and I think it's the same for the US and I suspect most other countries um, we needed a visa in order to come to Vietnam so we were like Cool, went to the visa office in London where we live and we sorted out our visas. We paid about 55 to 60 pounds each and got our visas in our passports before we came out here. Yeah. Then we got here and there was a booth on the, like before you hit border control in the airport at Hanoi, there's a little booth where you can get your visa for approximately $20 US. So our recommendation is, uh, Obviously, see what your country says, yeah, but we, we went to the embassy, I spent about an hour, hour and a half getting the visa sorted, and in the end it cost us £120, when we could have come here and spent 20 to $25 dollars for our visas. And now, granted, you will have to wait in the, in the airport, but mm -hmm. with how long it took to get our bags off the carousel, we probably had that time to waste. Yeah. So, um, so consider it. Do your research yeah. and check the rules for your country, but it's worth thinking about. Yeah, so pretty much when we landed and we were waiting for passport control, we saw a bunch of white, presumably Europeans, get into line, the guard go, visa office is just over there. They all turned around, got their visas, and we're straight back in line maybe 20 minutes later. Yeah. So definitely worth the consideration. Number three, traffic. Now everyone, every single one of these videos talks about the traffic in Hanoi specifically. It is crazy. So, so, so mental. crazy. As particularly in the old quarter, it's not as bad we found in the French quarter and in the more like traditional quarter where the museums mm -hmm. are. It's not as bad, they, they'd like stop on a red light. In the old quarter though, 
in just as a paraphrase that as well in the other quarters they do typically stop at the lights <laughs> but when the light goes red you'll get a couple of we'll say older people or yellowers. Um, yeah yellowers you can usually tell because they tend to have a really old bike they'll mm-hmm. just they're like don't care going straight through and they will go straight through um, and then when you get to the old quarter there's no such thing as a light system no it could be green but there'll still be sways going past mm. so in the UK if you want to cross the road um, if you can't be bothered to wait for a proper crossing where everyone will stop you there's always going to be a pause because there'll be a stopping further back up the road there'll always be a pause in traffic and you can zip across the road there that does not happen here. Yeah. You kind of, you have to, it'll take a while. You kind of have to get a feel for it. There will always be a thinning of the traffic. Mm-hmm. So you sometimes look at the road and it's just like a wave of motorbikes and cars. That's insane. Mm-hmm. Don't try and cross then. You will die. <laughs> Probably. I, I don't agree with that. But mm. it, it it definitely took us a day or two to get into it. You probably yeah. could step out on the massive wave, but you will notice that there are thinnings. Um, they are very much... So in the UK, it's very much pedestrians get out of my way, I'm a driver. Mm-hmm. It, over here, it's very much I'm a pedestrian, get out of my way. And they will never step back. That's the piece yeah, of advice we've gotten because they don't expect you to step back, but they do expect you to just keep walking straight. So do just walk slowly and consistently you don't have to stop they will see you and they will just skirt around you it's mm-hmm. it's quite like parting of the red sea um mm-hmm. it is quite interesting sometimes when you step out there and do just step out you'll see the locals do it all the time and people like ourselves who have been here a couple of days the yeah, initial shock factor is like ah mm-hmm. but if you do just find someone and they're either western and they go <laughs> i remember feeling like that or they're vietnamese and they go yeah, don't worry, this happens all the time. You can mother, you know, I'll mother duck you guys and you can twaddle yeah. along behind us. And that's what we did on our first day. So our first day, we got off the bus from the airport and we're straight onto a, one of the biggest roads in Hanoi. And um, <laughs> we were just stood there like... <gasps> it scared the <laughs> crap out of us. Yeah. We were like, okay, we've read up on this. We know what we're doing. We we're, know the theory. We're going to stand here. And then this little there. Vietnamese guy came up beside us, kind of looked at us, nodded at us, <laughs> and started walking across. And we were like, okay, follow. <laughs> <laughs> Since then, we have got more confident. Uh, we, we do still, or have occasionally, like followed locals again. Recently, we've been here about just over a week now. We're yeah. a bit more confident. And yesterday, we did find ourselves accidentally mother ducking a group of other yeah. tourists across the road you'd all been stood there we we're like guys come on like, and, and you, get you will it. notice it is perfectly safe because you it see you see people walking down the middle of the road and no one's going near them because they don't want to hit anyone and they're mm. perfectly good drivers it just seems absolutely crazy by western standards when you first get here but it, again do not step backwards do they're not, not expecting that they will go right behind your back if yeah. you start stepping back you can get hit as high risk but if you're going forwards or stop still you're perfectly safe much just as safe as you were standing on the uh, pavement no worries by that now number four or the rain so we've been in hanoi just over a week now and every day apart from one that we have been here it has absolutely chucked it down with rain so our tip in terms of the weather is if you're planning to be out and about then take wet weather gear, take a raincoat, take an umbrella. Yeah. However, it tips it down for about half an hour, 45 mm-hmm. minutes. So you could also, you could easily just pop into like a coffee shop or like get some lunch or something, mm. wait for the rain to pass. Put it this way, we have ponchos in our bag that we carry with us all the, always, but we've never once had to use them because it either absolutely smashes it down first thing in the morning last thing at night or the once that we've actually been caught out while it's been raining mm. we sat there with a the coffee and it went done and that's it and it stopped and then you're done for the day and actually it kind of cools it down a bit which is quite nice yeah you get about 20 minutes worth of <sighs> yeah so that's our top tip just be prepared yeah. it will tip it down almost definitely but don't let it put you off it yeah. won't last that long don't think oh bugger that's the day gone yeah because it looks like it is going to rain all day long we have a we've seen the sun once where we've been here it's always been super overcast and it looks like it could rain at any time but it's not going to it'll do is 30 to 40 minutes and that's it and that's you know yourself it's more than long enough for a cup of coffee number five five the humidity so every day we've been here it has been at least over 80 percent it's got up to 94 percent Every single night, Every it, night. Get, it hits 7 o'clock and it's 94% humidity. So even when the temperature is a little bit cooler, the humidity, it just, it sticks to your skin. Mm. And because it is a little bit warm, your body does try and sweat to cool you down. And when it's that humid, 
the sweat does not cool you down. So your body will just be pumping out sweat, which means you need to stay hydrated. You need to make sure that you're eating um, salt and mm. like other nutrients. You can get nutrient replacement packets to just make sure you keep your like nutrients up because you are losing a lot just in yeah. sweat the whole time. It also means your clothes get gross really fast. You have to shower like two to three times a day, depending yeah. on how much you're going out and about. So just be prepared, yeah. bring lots of changes of clothes. Expect it's like, some of the days that we've sweated the most have actually been temperature wise the coolest but the humidity the highest so one or two days it was only only 27 degrees c but the humidity was 94 percent and it made it feel like it was 50 degrees and other days like earlier on today the humidity was only about 75 percent but it was tw uh, it was 30 33 degrees mm -hmm. and it didn't feel that bad until the humidity started to climb again we could feel we noticed when the humidity started because we yeah. were walking around like looking at stuff like oh god this is a really nice temperature and then the humidity started to climb and we we're like <laughs> and just bring your bottle of water with you Always wherever you go water. we're we're getting through about uh, about six liters a day yeah. close to six liters a day between us so that's three liters each and you will go through that very easily that's not forcing drinking mm -hmm. um like on our first day we went out to buy water and when we first got our room it was like ah that it feels nice and cool we didn't realize about the humidity and within about an hour i had given myself mild heat stroke even though i was still drinking water but obviously not enough and hadn't expected that massive hit of humidity um, I was fortunately okay, but it was an issue to think back on. Yeah. Keep your water, keep hydrated, keep your salts up. It is humid and your body will react. And let it, like, if you live somewhere that's a similar climate, maybe it's not such a big deal or you already have habits in place to deal with it. From the UK, which is a lot cooler, a lot less humid, we've had to learn. Yeah. Learn from our mistakes. <laughs> right, number six. This kind of links into the previous point. It's the time of day to travel. Mm. So in Vietnam, or in Hanoi specifically, we've noticed that there tends to be, the day is kind of split into two halves. So people tend to get up very early. Look, most uh, food sellers and shops and stuff, they tend to open as early as six o'clock in the morning. Not all of them, but most of them. Mm. And people will get up, they'll get their stuff done, they'll do their chores, yeah. they'll have their food, <clears throat> they'll go to work. And then lots of the, especially the small shops that we're noticing, then around between 12 to maybe about three o'clock, mm. Play, like the streets are dead because that is the hottest time of day yeah and then again from f from five everything is lively everything is opening the yeah. evening starts you'll you'll get you'll get certain places that do open again at four maybe five but they tend to have aircon and tend to be the larger places but definitely as soon as that five o'clock bell hits it's like school's been let out everyone comes streaming out of buildings there's traffic everywhere it's crazy all the stalls are set up there's food going everywhere the city just explodes into life mm -hmm. um, in the morning it's a lot more reserved and you can get around a bit easier but as soon as that five o'clock hits it explodes out and by seven o'clock the city is absolutely jam-packed not in a bad way but there is a lot of life it's really exciting so if you do get here at like three or four in the afternoon you're like Oh, where is everybody? What's going on? By seven o'clock, <laughs> by seven o'clock, they're going to be everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so in terms of planning your travel, we've been walking pretty much everywhere. There are some buses around Hanoi. There's also um, motorbike taxis, car taxis, uh, tuk-tuks. There's all these different options. We've just been walking everywhere. We found that we can get from one side of the city to the other within 45 minutes. Yeah. Like everything is quite close. But the first couple of days when Michael got heat stroke, we were going out at around 12. We'd have a leisurely yeah. breakfast, go back to our room, have a shower, go out for a walk at around 11, be walking around for a couple of hours. We were walking around in some of the hottest times of the day. And Most it was humid as well. Humid and uncomfortable and sweaty and dead. Like there's no yeah. one around and we were like, Why? Why? no What's atmosphere, it's not that much fun. Like sure it's gorgeous, but basically you want to be planning to do, if you're gonna be walking around or traveling around, plan to do it either in the mm. morning or in the evening and try and you can like hang out and stuff but I don't plan like long walks in the hottest part of the day yeah just just be sensible about it mm -hmm. it's the hottest time of day but unlike we'll say in my experience Spain where it's the hottest part of the day um, you can still have you can still do stuff but here the hottest part of the day is a little boring they have this fantastic way of life um, the next one seven is seven that'd be good if I actually <laughs> have um, 
is hawkers. So the Vietnamese people have to be the nicest, most respectful, loveliest people I have ever met in my life. I cannot say enough nice things about them. Mm. However, there's a lot of hawking in it. So it, they they walk up and down the streets and they have food and they have these ladies that carry these big baskets and wooden things and these guys in tuk tuks and shoe shiners and all this and they come up to you and, and they'll either like try and offer you a free sample and some of those will then say okay you've got to buy a big load or the old ladies with the baskets they will put the basket on you so you can try it and then charge you for a picture um, or the shoe shiners you know you get what you get they don't try and trick you into anything and the tuk tuks are the same thing but they're all there's no pressure in it they go yeah and you go no thanks and they go okay and carry on the way unlike in my experience in spain or in tunisia and that which is very much come in my shop come in my shop come in my shop come in my shop and they really try and force and push it and it just gets a little overwhelming and you feel like ah, I, d I hate everyone kind of thing here it's very much a shoe shine no okay and they carry on or you want to come in the shop? No? Okay. And most people with shops won't actually ask you to come in. They'll just let you do your own thing. It's just the people walking around. So if you're sitting there having a beer, every couple of minutes you'll have someone come up and try and offer you a donut or some peanuts or a shoe shine. You just go, no, thank you. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Most of the time, if you're just like, no, thanks, um, they'll just go away. Like, there's loads of tourists, loads of locals. There's yeah. lots of other fish <clears throat> in the sea. and. Every now and then we've had a couple of people who've been a little bit more pushy being like, oh no, no, do it, do it. Just keep like your smile, just be like, no, thank you, yeah. just not interested. Unless you are, I mean, maybe you want your shoes shined. Go yeah. for it, I'm sure they're great. The, Why not? The, the, the products are the exact same stuff that mm. they sell in the shops, but it's just, you know, they've got a, they make a business. They don't have a shop yet, exactly. so they walk around and ask people. And These are people who are trying to make yeah. money for their families. In general, the culture here is not to try and rip you off. It's not to try and be pushy mm. or force you to do things. It's not to try and like, it's really not a like, give me your money kind of culture here. It's a lot more calm. It's more, yeah. I have these goods. Are you interested? If the answer yeah. is no, mo like nine out of 10 people that we come across are just like, okay, you don't deserve my goods, bye. Mm. Like to really test it, we went to a restaurant last night and we gave them the perfect opportunity to point out the most expensive things on the menu. Mm -hmm. And we said, what's good here? And they literally went, this is good and this is good and they were pretty much some of the cheapest things on the menu they're very yeah. they they don't seem to have a bad bone Vietnamese people don't have a bad bone in their body they're like they seem to be of the impression of I'm super proud in my business and my goods mm. so if I try and rip you off I'm making myself look bad so I'm not gonna do that and there are plenty of other people if you're not interested then you're not interested whatever um, so yeah. the one exception that can be the not all of them, most of the old ladies we see with the long sticks, most of them, they're, they're just trying to do their business, they yeah. like ignore you completely. Um, but we have heard a couple of people who've got caught by people who will just put their like try and trap you with their sticks and then dump it on your shoulder and then I take a picture and then be like, okay, hey, you have to pay me now for that picture. We've had one or two people try and ask us, be like, picture, picture, but because we're aware this happened to some yeah. friends that we met, um, because we're aware that this happens, we're just like, yeah, no, and thank that, you. And that doesn't really happen in the old quarter, but more in like the French quarter. Um, we haven't really seen it happen in the old quarter. No. But, There's loads of people yeah. with the sticks, but they're not trying to like trap yeah. you or anything. They're just trying to do their business. Mm -hmm. They're a practical way to move around. And also, we've again, we've heard stories, not from our friends, but of people who've um, some of these people who like try and trap you for the pictures, they're like, oh, um, like really overcharging for yeah. like a banana or something. But, but we've not experienced no, that at all. It's been absolutely perfect. Okay, so tip number eight: food. When Michael works out his fingers, <laughs> food count. Count. Good job, baby. Good job. It's the food. So in the UK, restaurants tend to be pretty good, <clears throat> and. Then there's these like little kind of cheap plasticky looking joints that you're like 90% sure you're going to get salmonella from. Or gonorrhea or, gonorrhea, or, or something, else or something or, yeah. You, know, just, you don't <laughs> want to eat that, you don't trust them. Here there are many places that look like that, but they have been some of the best food that we have had. We have not had a single bad meal in Hanoi so far. Oh, we've been trying to find them. <laughs> we, we've been going to, like, we were fancying like a dessert the other day and Michael Googled a place and we got there and it looked like the scuzziest kebab joint and we were like, Oh God. But we're like, no, we've, we've come all this way for pudding. We're going to go get a dessert right now. And Michael's like, oh, can I have a donut, please? And 
it was like empty, there was no one there. And they literally got like a donut and they like hand fried it fresh in front of him, especially for him. And whipped up this like chocolatey, shiny glaze of gorgeous deliciousness. And it was just the most beautiful, perfect looking donut mm. in this scuzzy looking place. It was incredible. Mm. Or the place that we went to last night. It was literally a stall. You've never seen anywhere look scuzzier in your life. But we sat down and it, it caught, we got buckets of food for the equivalent of four pounds with mm. two cups of tea. And it was the most it's fantastic delicious. food I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> and seriously, the first day or two you get here, you're like, uh, I'm so going to die if I eat here. Because you can see the meat out and all that. But a piece of advice that someone else said was, think about it this way. They're only selling one, maybe two products. So they get through it quite quickly because they have customers all day. Or you can go to the cafe that has a menu of a hundred things, but you know they've got to have all the ingredients, and you can't necessarily say they use a fridge. So go to little old lady or little old man who's just cooking up some rice and chicken because you know what that chicken that you're eating probably was alive an hour ago, and that's how fresh it is. Like it, there is nothing that isn't fresh here. It just looks by our sensibilities really scary and off-putting, but once you get used to it, you're like, yes! And don't be afraid to try the smaller vendors or the like old lady who's set up in like an alleyway and has like <laughs> two stools in front of her. If you can see that they're getting good turnover of customers, and specifically if you can see Vietnamese people eating mm. there. But it's more of, of what we're looking for mostly is just, can you see that there's going to be lots of people going in and mm. out? Um, for example, the place we were last night that didn't really look that nice from the outside, as we were walking up there, we saw four takeaway people come out with little yeah. plastic bags. So we're like, okay, this is probably pretty good. People are taking this home with them. Yeah, and the Vietnamese aren't a case of they eat it and they don't get sick from it because they eat this kind of food all the time. They are very discerning about they want to eat and they know exactly where they're going and they all have favorites and they're, it, they, they know exactly where it's good and where it's bad. So if you can see Vietnamese people coming in out of it, you're more than safe eating there. And again, that can be a little off-putting because some of the places, they literally cook in the middle of the street. They'll have a little mm. gas stove with a wok full, full of oil and they'll cook with that. And to us, it's like, oh my God, what are you doing? Health and safety. <laughs> and then you actually sit down and we've not had a single problem and we've eaten on the mm. street. We've eaten in some nice restaurants as well, but again, we've seen like quite a high yeah. turnover going through. <clears throat> but we've eaten in um, like little back alleys and like just people off the street and with little barbecues in yeah. front. We've eaten at all different places. All the food has been delicious, but so we good. are keeping an eye out. We, we wait until we see like at least a few people going in and out before yeah. we'll go somewhere. And we want to see like a relatively full-ish restaurant. Yeah. Or it, if it's a little bit quieter in the day, at least that there are a couple of people yeah. going in and out of it. But that's more of just a sign of quality because the food is tasty than actually safety. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so the next one we're on to, which Number is nine. nine. And Second I counted it right this time. Yay. Yay. Did you practice the whole time? I did. I was counting. I was like, one, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> Okay, so number nine is water. So we mentioned earlier that with the humidity, you sweat a lot. And it's a hot country as well, so obviously you need to be drinking a lot of water. We've been drinking about three litres a day each. Mm -hmm. So when we first got here, we researched the water, if tap water is drinkable. Yeah. It's, it is treated, but it's not really drinkable without boiling. Yeah. So the first thing we were doing is we were boiling our kettle and filling up our water bottles from that and drinking that. And that just gave us stomach cramps. It just was not good. <laughs> Stomach cramps and other problems, shall we say. Um, not necessarily badly, but definitely a change in water. Yeah, our bodies were reacting and we're not really happy with it. Yes. So after that happened, we were like, okay, so we've been buying these big old six litre bottles that you can get on like any supermarket. The brands that we typically go for is Circle K. It's a big shop. It's almost like a 7-Eleven, but a yeah. Vietnamese version. They're everywhere. And these six litre bottles cost 25,000 um, Vietnamese dong. Um, which is which, about 80p. Yeah, ATP. So ATP for six litres, it's nothing. You can deal with that, and we're getting through about one of those um, between us a day. Yeah, we're buying about one per day. <clears throat> we're also, when we're out and about, we are having tea when we're in restaurants. Mm -hmm. We are having like hot egg cold, we're having coffee, yeah. we're having crushed ice, we're having all sorts. So we probably are also having some tap mm -hmm. water around and about as well, and that has been fine. Yep. So it's just when the majority of our water was tap water, yeah. that's when our bodies reacted negatively. Like, like a lot of people, when you go to Spain or Tunisia or any, like a lot of these countries, I've always been told, oh, don't drink the eyes. Oh, don't brush your teeth with the water. Oh, mm -hmm. be very careful, blah, 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 blah. Here, small amounts of it, like an ice brushing your teeth and cups mm -hmm. of tea or coffee, 
Yeah, it's not a problem. You'll be yeah. perfectly fine. We've been fine. It's just don't make it your predominant water source. Yeah, just just spend the ATP <clears throat> yeah. and drink this. And it's we also we have um, one of these that we carry around with us the whole time. And because there are two of us, we're very good at reminding each other. So as we're walking around, um, one of us will be like, water break, and then yeah. we'll both have some water, and then we'll carry on. If you're on your own, it might be worth just even setting a reminder. Yeah. If you're particularly forgetful, set a reminder on your phone every 20 minutes or so, yeah. just to remind you to have a drink. And, and those water drinking. bottles, which are 1.5 litres, tend to be about 10 or so thousand. Yeah, it's like 30-odd um, They can be between five and 10,000 dong for one of those bottles. So just grab one, drink the water out of it, fill it up from your big one, exactly. easy to use. Just, just keep water with you all the time, keep drinking it, keep hydrated, mm. don't be <clears> stupid and get yourself dehydrated yeah. because it's so hot and so humid, it will happen fast. And Super it's, fast. It's A lot faster dumb. than anywhere you've ever been before. Exactly. Well, for us, for sure. Yeah. So just be aware, be prepared, think about it be and careful. pay the ATP. Just build yeah. it into your budget that you have to just buy this water. Mm. It's not a big deal. Just do it. Ten. Number 10. Bartering. Bartering. So, as anybody who knows me knows, I've got quite a brash personality when I want to be. Um, and <laughs> um, so, I love bartering, like I'm, I'm confident enough to barter with people. And you know, depending on the country that you go to, there's always a different rule about how do you barter, do you let them initiate, do you start initiating, how much do you ask for off, and you know, because you don't want to be rude about it, but you also want to get a good deal. Um, so the general rule of thumb for Hanoi so far, we've been told, is 10 to 20 percent. Um, That's is, more true in <clears> markets <throat> than in shops, but you can still ask in shops. Sometimes yeah. we have noticed one or two shops have a sign being like, it costs this much, no discounts. In yeah. which case, just don't bother. If they've got a sign saying, we're not going to offer you a discount, don't waste your time. Yeah. Either you're happy with the price or move on and find somewhere else. And have a look around. So a lot of stalls that we have been to, they've been at a, we'll say for a pair of trousers, they've been a hundred dong. Um, and then you go somewhere around the corner and it'll be like the only shop around, but it'll do it for 60 dong. And you can go in there and barter, barter or just take it as the good deal that it is. Mm -hmm. um, so example, the other night, I we were all at the night market, which is on from uh, Friday to Sunday night. Um, and then on holidays, they also do it on the bank holiday. Um, but the I bought a shirt. She said it's a hundred thousand. I said fifty. She said a hundred thousand. I said sixty. She said a hundred thousand. So I went fine, whatever. You're not willing to barter. Put it back. I went to walk off, and she went wait 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 ninety. I went seventy, and she went ninety. And I said look, I said seventy. Well, I can walk away, and she went. 80 and I said yeah okay fine that's 20% off cool so I give her 80,000 she was happy I was happy and yeah we both kept it civil there was no rudeness about it there was no anger she she knew she could get away with an extra 20% but I was wanting to barter and don't be afraid to walk away there's a lot of stores that sell very similar mm. things so you can always come back right Mm -hmm. Even if you're not happy with the price you're being offered, if they're, if they're really like, so that we, I was looking at a pair of trousers that were really nice, and um, she was like a hundred, and we were like, that's a lot because these ones were more like sixty, yeah, and so we we're like, oh, that's a lot, and she was like, they're good quality. We we're like, could you do eighty? And she was just like, these are good quality. You're not going to get them. So we we're like. So we went, Go okay, bye bye. We she didn't really mind. She was just like, okay, you're not yeah. going to be buying my product. That's fine by me. There's plenty of other tourists that will pay the 120,000 for these trousers. She didn't, she didn't want to budge on that. Yeah. So and we that's said, her property, yeah. it's her shop, her business. And to be fair, they did feel um, thicker and better quality than the ones I've now bought. But um, because of the heat, I'm actually happier with the thinner ones. But it does mean they, these are my second pair. They do wear out quite fast if you're not careful with mm. them. Um, so maybe actually the more expensive ones would have lasted longer. Yeah, but we probably would have been more willing to buy them if she was a bit more willing to budge, but she wasn't, and that's perfectly fine. We're, that's up to yeah, her. That's, that's the way it is. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Don't be afraid to barter. Make sure you drink your water. Mm -hmm. Travel at the right times of day, and you'll have a fantastic time here. Exactly. 
And then there's also, there's all like other things that you just need to look up, like what sort of vaccinations and stuff do you yeah. need? But lots of other just basic standard travel mm. research that you need to do. But these are our top 10 specific tips for Hanoi. And ones that we haven't necessarily seen other people specifically talk about. I mean, the traffic is pretty common. Everyone's <laughs> the traffic is a, but it's, it's a big deal. So yeah. it's worth talking about. Um, but if there's anything else you guys want to know about, definitely just give us um, a question. Yeah, just give us a shout. Send a send a message in a comment, um, or if you know us, you can catch us on our many different medias. Or um, go on Instagram and yeah. just again send us a message or comment on one of our posts, and we'll see it and reply. Yeah, because we're quite happy to help you guys out. Mm. Um, so yeah, until next time, guys, stay safe, be good, and don't do anything we would. <laughs> Bye.